Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to episode 10 of How I Use It. Today we're going to be having a look at the Empress Effects Euro Burrow or the Zoya Euro Burrow. You can call it Zebu for short, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, man, this thing is pretty much a beast. Um, just imagine it's like how I can explain it is like if a disc thing and an ER301 had a baby, this is what they would have. They would, they would have a Zoya. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you can pretty much make whole joints on this thing, man, um, by itself. I want to preface everything by saying um, I've been using the Empress Zoya pedal for quite some time. It's really handy for me because it gives me a very powerful effects unit that's not in my rig, so it doesn't take up any HP. Honestly, I've just been using it for effects, just building effects like reverbs, delays, stuff like that. Um, nothing real crazy, just using it to add on to the end of, you know, one of my voices in the chain or something like that. Um, but I wasn't really using the full power of, of the unit. And um, I think by them putting Euroboro out, it, it just makes it even stronger because now, for me, I can do so much more stuff easily with this euro burrow than i was able to do you know with my uh zoya pedal itself yeah it just made it all uh more interesting for me um and i've been diving way deeper into zebu than i dived into the regular zoya pedal just trying to use all the tools that you know that this this package has to offer first i want to jump into a couple of experiments that i did with um zebu and rings they were in like a pod 62 HP and both of them fit perfectly. And I was like, all right, let's, you know, let's get the notice thing with this. And um, made a couple dope things. Um, we're going to go into that first and then um, we'll get into some patches that I created and, you know, my thinking behind them and how I wanted to make them or why I wanted to make them, you know. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and hop right in. For this joint, yo, I just wanted to uh, kind of make like a real lush reverb, something that like carried, you know what I mean? So let's check this out real quick. something real heavy you know what I mean let's go through real quick how I did this one this one's pretty simple one pager so I have elements coming into the input and then it is going into both inputs on this uh, ghost reverb right and then the output of one of the ghost reverbs uh, the left output of the ghost reverb is going into a uh, pitch shifter that's going up 12 uh, it's going up a uh, octave and then that runs into a delay line it's delayed you know 93.5 milliseconds 
and then that goes out into another delay line, delayed a lot more. Output of that goes into a reverb light, right? So uh, one thing, the, the, out, the output of the first delay line goes into input one of the reverb light, and then the, sec the output of the second delay line goes into input two, and then I'm feeding those back into the ghost verb. Um, but I got them turned down a bit, you know, just to uh, tame tame everything a little bit. Um, and then, you know, out of the ghost reverb, we're heading straight to the um, to the mixer. Let's check it out one more time. So this one was like a quick, easy, I knew I wanted like to make this sound real big, you know what I mean? And um, you know, just with a couple building blocks, two reverbs, pitch, uh, pitch shifter, and two delay lines, we get something real nice and big, you know what I'm saying? Yo, yo, so for this one, I wanted to make something that would make a simple melody into something more complex. Let's go through how I made this one. So I started with the input from rings. Let's plug that back up. Um, I ran that into a delay line. I ran that delay into a pitch shifter. And then out of the pitch shifter, it goes over into a filter, low pass filter. And then out of the low pass filter, it goes over to this little uh, three channel mixer I have here. And then I've got another delay line. And this is all coming from this input. So this input runs three places, or actually four places. We'll get there though. So the second delay line uh, runs into a tremolo, out of, out of a tremolo, into another filter. <clears throat> out of that, back into this mixer. Then we have another put input going into a, a granular input, you know, a granular line. Uh, I have some a couple things going on on that. Um, I have my grain size at like 50, 96, 0.96. The position, you can see that. Boom. And that goes into the mix. Then we come out of this mix, and we're gonna go into another filter, right? Out of that filter, we're going back into this uh, ghost verb. Then let's go over here a little bit. I have a LFO kind of controlling these two uh, filter cutoffs a bit, and this third one just a little bit. Let's give it a listen. So with this setup here, I was able to create a lot of movement in this sound. Just took it into a whole different dimension and, you know, like I said, it turned that really simple melody into something more complex. It's kind of like a slap back reverb delay-ish kind of thing with a tape element in it. It's kind of weird, but it's some granular in there too, you know, adding to all of that. There we go with another quick patch on the Zoya. Um, just a quick note, like, you know, you can see I'm touching 100 on this one, you know, but I've pushed it a little further, actually a lot further before. But, um, yeah, adding these things up can get pretty CPU intensive, but um, I think the Zoya handles it pretty well. Um, I can't do this type of thing with any other module that I have, especially like effects type module. But once again, this isn't only an effects module. It's like a Euro rack in a module. So yeah, let's go to the next one. 
All right, so this is the same patch as the last one, just with a different voice. Let's check it out. really like that let's record that Yeah, yeah. So this one, I'm gonna call this one Amplify, yo. I wanted to create something that would give a sound some depth, some real ambience, like just put it in a whole nother mood, like put it in a whole nother scene. So uh, let's break this one down first and then uh, I'll give you the dry sound and then we go through the wet sound again. To start off, we're coming out of Morphogene, I got a sample coming out of morphogen and uh coming in here we're going into the compressor out of the compressor we're going into a vibrato and then we've got um controlling the vibrato right here we've got a lfo but it's going into a cv mixer on one channel and then i'm just attenuating the sound um so out of here we're going into a filter out of the filter we're then going into two separate delay lines okay one delay line goes into an audio balance just so i could uh attenuate you know the feedback in so i got it running out of here back into itself and then out of here it goes over to um input three on this mixer here then going back to the second delay line, it comes out, going into a pitch shifter. Out of the pitch shifter, it's going over to a filter. Out of the filter, back into a mixer. All right, the signals come into this mixer. We go out of this mixer. Oops, sorry, here's my output. Into both channels of this hall reverb. I'm sorry, it's a plate reverb. Out of the plate, we're going into another mixer that's mixing the dry signal and you know all of this wet stuff together. Then out of there, we're going into you know the outputs. These two LFOs down here, one is going here, and that's going into my, my gene size. This one is actually from this LFO, and that is going into my slide. So let's check out the dry signal. Let's try, let's go to the west signal. Yeah, man, so I felt like that was real big. It, it, it took that sound to a whole different dimension, to a whole different level. You know what I mean? Just with that compression, let's go back over it. Running through that compression, got some vibrato on there. Running that through a filter. Two delay lines. One of the delay lines is feeding back on itself. The other one has a pitch shifter. And on that pitch shifter, we're going up 12 semitones, so we're going up an octave on that one. And then, um, you know, we got the uh, the plate reverb going on in there. Couple mixers, just mixing things together and, you know, setting some levels that I want. Um, yeah, and then we got some LFOs controlling some, some external stuff with the CV out. 
Yeah, man. Dope little patch right there. Yo, yo. So for this one, um, I wanted to create kind of a toy piano. And I wanted to have it, like, varying in pitch with some uh, delay and reverb on it. So uh, this is a mix of Rings and Odessa. Um, and honestly, I wanted to do most of the most of everything inside of the Zebu, the Euroboro. Let's see what we got going on here. First, we have a filter on low pass. We got a delay. We got a hall reverb. We got a vibrato. And on this page, we have ADSR. We have clock divider and two LFOs. So what's going on here is we got a quad VCA going on here, and I just use that to mix um, the odd, odd and even partials from Odessa, and then I'll put rings together, and then that's all running into Zoya. Then we come into a filter, um, uh, you know, got a set kind of in the middle somewhere, resonance up a little bit to 1.5. Um, all right, then that goes into the delay. Um, and out of the delay, we're going into a vibrato. Out of the vibrato, we're going into the hall reverb. And then I have these um, LFOs controlling some of the um, properties of Odessa and rings, um, two each actually. And then I have a, uh, a trigger input going into the CVN that's kicking off this ADSR. And uh, actually, I'm sorry, I got three outputs. Um, controlling Odessa. One output's controlling rings, two are controlling Odessa, and then this this ADSR is going out into uh, this quad VCA over here off camera. Okay, yeah, this clock divider is controlling the delay time, so uh, everything's in sync. And plus, um, I'm sending a clock in from Mutant Brain right here into uh, CV1. Let's check out the dry sound first. Yeah, so that's the wet version right there. And let's talk about this uh, vibrato here because I have uh, also one of the LFOs, this LFO right here, controlling the vibrato rate. And uh, I got it tuned down to a kind of a small range and I just want minor slight pitch changes every time I hit the key. So even if I hit the same key, it's gonna be slightly a different pitch. And that just gives it that old wonky kind of toy piano kind of feel and just throw some reverb and delay on that. And uh, yeah, I got a nice uh, patch here.